Hey guys, welcome to the Touchdown Table. I'm Ryan, that's Tyler, that's Jordan. And in this video, we are going to be talking about some of the most important picks in this upcoming 2020 NFL Draft. It's coming soon, so let's break it down. Alright, uh, he said break it down. You probably were able to hear that, cut out a little bit, but let's start at pick number three. Just talk about that. That pick is the Detroit Lions. Most people expect this pick to be traded away, uh, so Detroit will trade down. Most likely, the team's going to be trying to get up to get a quarterback. Um, so that will be influential, but I mean, I don't think it's going to alter it too much. It's just a pick that you look at and it's glaring right at you as a pick that's a huge trade alert at some point, either before or after the draft. I know Ryan keeps saying, why can't the Lions just trade the pick before the draft so it makes yes. mock drafts easier? Um, but that is a major pick, just something I'd bring up. I don't think it's going to alter too much unless a really surprised team besides uh, Dolphins or the Chargers comes down to take that pick. I think uh, Chargers and Dolphins are the two contenders to go grab that pick. But it could alter something if a surprise team comes down and grabs it. Yeah, I, I don't think it would change too much comes if up. a team did switch because they would probably draft a quarterback and the Lions would probably get who they would get at five or six if it does end up being one of those two teams anyway. So it wouldn't be a mock ruiner. It'd still be big to see a trade like that happen. I actually have a trade in my mock draft that will be released soon. I don't want to say anything about that. But this is definitely a pick that if there's for some reason not a trade before the draft that you got to keep an eye on because I feel like something's going to happen with this, this pick. At least teams are going to be trying to get this pick. If, if on April 23rd... Yeah, Okay. If on April 23rd, the the Lions are picking at pick three in this draft, and they, they actually draft someone at three, I'll be shocked, in my opinion. Yeah, me too. And I, I think it's just as much about the Lions trading down as it is about another team like the Chargers or, the, or uh, the Dolphins or maybe even a dark horse team like the Jaguars or the Patriots trading up for a quarterback. I think it's just as much about Detroit trading down because they know they can still get their guy at pick five or six. Yeah, those are... Five and six are important, too, just because that's going to be quarterbacks. Also, the first pick in the draft is very important that the Bengals get it right. Uh, please draft Joe Burrow. That's all I'm going to say about that. Yeah. Yeah, and also for the Lions. I feel good about this one. It's beneficial yeah. for them to trade down because there's going to be so many offensive tackles and quarterbacks going in the top ten, most likely. Uh, so let's move on to the next pick after that. That's also an important one in this draft. It's the Giants at pick four. Um, and most people are having him either mocked Isaiah Simmons. I couldn't quite tell you his position because he plays everywhere. And, uh, and our tackle. Those are the two competitors that I've seen. And I think all the mock drafts that I saw. And that's something that could, as Tyler said before, be a, a mock crusher. I don't know exactly. That one could be a mock runner, yeah. Yeah. Although I like mock crusher better. Yeah, it's, cause, cause whoever they draft, we, we're not sure where they're gonna go with this new Joe Judge team. Uh, it's going to be fun to watch. And I don't think anyone's going to have much of an idea of what it's going to be until Roger Goodell announced the pick from his basement. Yeah, and, and with, with this one, I don't want to give away too much because, you know, our, our individual mock drafts are going to be coming out in the next week or so. But all I'm going to say is that I think there's very good reasons for both arguments, the Isaiah Simmons argument yeah. and the tackle argument. You know, that defense was not good last year. They've got some holes there, and Simmons can probably fill several of them because he plays so many positions. But at the same time, the offensive line was not good. And you got to protect Daniel Jones. So very good reasons for both sides. You'll find out which side I'm on in a couple of days or something. You'll find it out for all of us. And I'm not even sure if we all know what side we're on as we're making this video yet. I know I'm still conflicted. Uh, let's move on to another pick that I want to talk about. I like to talk. I'm kind of in conflict with pick number nine. That's yeah, the yeah. Jaguars. Um, so the conflict with them is, okay, will they go tackle? If Isaiah Simmons falls, will they take him? What if... Their ground falls, will they take him? I mean, this might be the toughest decision for the Jaguars at this point because they, they could either fill a need or maybe if some, some, if some really good person slips, they could take him like Simmons. I don't know how they have Simmons or, or maybe if Derek Brown falls. I don't know which one they have over the other. So I think if Derek Brown's at this pick, in my opinion, that's who they take. Uh, I don't think the Cardinals, or not Cardinals, the Panthers would leave him on the board. Uh, but, so... The, a very conflicted pick for the Jaguars at this point. They could do a lot of things. Now you mentioned Isaiah Simmons. Um, that's actually very interesting because last year, something we could possibly see in this draft could be very similar to what we saw with this exact same team with Josh Allen falling to where? 
right here to the Jacksonville seven. Jaguars. Or that's seven. Yeah, that's right. seven, but still to the Jaguars. They were able to, and they're very similar players, actually, because no one knew what Josh Allen was going to be in the NFL, and it's the same thing with Isaiah Simmons here. So if he falls, obviously they're going to take him. But, Jordan, you set off. Uh, obviously. If, if Isaiah Simmons is there at nine, are you not taking Isaiah Simmons? I mean, I'm looking at Daniel Jeremiah mock draft, and he has him falling one more pick to the Browns. I'm not saying that no I, way. I just no. agree with I, that. No way the I think they would take I just don't see it. No, I, I, I agree with you also. I'm just saying that's not, and obviously, because they do have their options. And if they really like a tackle, if they really like Derek Brown, if he's still on the board, they might go out and take him. So uh, it just depends on how all the cards play out from the picks in front of them. Uh, to that point. I don't think they're getting the best tackle since the Cardinals are in front of them. Oh, yeah. Maybe in their opinion yeah. they'll get the best tackle, but one tackle will be taken off yeah. the board at least before. At uh, least, like you said, there could be could be more. Maybe yeah. a team could trade up to try to get one too. Who knows? Um, and another pick that I want to talk about is pick 13. Wait, it's before 13, can we go to 11? Oh, yeah, that's a good one, actually. Yeah, I forgot about that. And I, I don't want to mention... I'm not yeah. saying this because it's the Jets specifically. I'm saying this because... It's a team that could pick a wide receiver, and if the Jets are willing to give up their spot, maybe they like someone that's not as high on people's draft boards. Whoever gets this pick most likely will be trading up to get a wide receiver if something does happen. So I think this is where we start to see some receiver action finally in the draft to pick 11. There's conflict. There could be a run on receivers starting at that pick. Yeah. And, yeah, the, the Jets are in a tough spot because they need offensive tackles to protect Sam Darnold, but they also need a little bit of excitement in that offense, and there's definitely some exciting receivers in this draft class. So, oh, yeah. again, it depends on who's there, but they can go either way. Mm -hmm. And before this pick, I mean, I think that they could definitely use an offensive tackle like Ryan said, but it's possible that all four of the top offensive tackles in this draft could be off the board at this point. Uh, with pick 10 and up in front of that. So they might just go wide receiver. Uh, they'll probably be left with their last choice out of the top four. So uh, they, I mean, if, unless their top guy for some reason is still there, maybe they're high on someone that others aren't, they might take them. But I think they're going to go wide receiver, especially after losing Robbie Anderson to the Panthers. Yep. All right. Uh, still in the wide receiver talks on this next one. Now we're at pick 13. It's the San Francisco 49ers. Um... A lot of people are having him taking Henry Ruggs the third. Uh, they like to see him in that Kyle Shanahan offense. Just love to see him work with such a great explosive player like Ruggs. But there's also talks about uh, if Kinlaw falls, they could go tackle after losing Buckner, and maybe they could try to help that off in the line if there's someone there. Uh, Andrew Thomas is a guy I've seen slip to the pick after them uh, in the Buccaneers. So they do have their options as well. I'm sure there's going to be trade talk with this pick. But as I was making my rough draft for my mock draft that will be coming out soon, I kind of thought about it. I don't know who would be willing to give up enough to trade up here because teams are kind of set for the positional needs that they would have. Maybe you could go later on in on the draft board and there's teams later that would possibly you think would want to get in front to get those positions, but it just think, seems like too far of a jump and they're giving up too much so they yeah. could just wait in their spot. So. It seems like it would be a good trade destination, but I don't know if it's completely realistic. Yeah, and it, it all depends on, you know, who's left. It, it, it depends, you know, what do the Jets and the Raiders do before them? Are, are the best receivers still there, or are true receivers already gone? That has to be taken into consideration. Yeah. Well. Yeah. And then I'd say after, after that area, the, a lot of the picks at that point is kind of just preference as some of the top guys are off the board, so you go to your big board, see which guy you like the best. Some of them could be obvious, some of them not. So uh, and, like, this is a point where some teams have a few more weaknesses that they might want to fill. I mean, these are actually the better teams, so they don't have as much weaknesses, but they do have a lot of areas that they could improve on still for a lot of them. Uh, so it's not like one position that they have to focus on completely for most of the teams. So they have a lot of options. I don't see a team that I need to talk, we need to talk about. If anyone else has one that they'd like to uh, talk about for a little bit after that last one we just talked about, feel free to go ahead and do so. But I feel like all of them are, they could just go a lot of different ways uh, based on how teams decide they want to go. I guess that's how the draft works. Yeah, yeah it's going to be some surprises, no matter who. Yeah. yeah, and towards the end of the draft, to maybe mention just a couple of things really quickly. I think 
with the Eagles and the Vikings being next to each other, that could be a race for a certain receiver. The Jaguars pick right before those two teams. Maybe That's also a receiver, a team that people could see going for a receiver. Yeah. So maybe someone will trade up with the Raiders uh, at pick 19 to try to get in front of the Jaguars, too, to try to grab a receiver, get in front of all three, and become the dominant guy to most likely get Justin Jefferson, who would probably be the guy who's on the board. I think someone would take rugs if it was in front, specifically talking about uh, the Broncos. But I have a feeling the Vikings really like Justin Jefferson. I don't know why. He just seems like they what they had with Stefan Diggs, I guess this is why. They, they have had Stefan Diggs for such a long time, and Justin Jefferson is such a similar guy that could come in and fill that role right away. And I think that they would highly value that. So that's another wide receiver interesting spot. And I was make I was making my rough draft also for I still have one I make I'm making more than one rough draft to try to get all the kinks out. But um, I did have that thought. But the thing is, when I I went back and I was thinking, okay, is Adam Thielen a slot receiver or a wide receiver? And when I was watching stuff on it, it looked like he was lined up in the slot most likely. I should have done more research on it. Uh, but I'm pretty sure he's a slot receiver, and with LSU, um, Justin Jefferson was the guy who played in the slot a lot, so there's nothing wrong with having two good slot receivers on a team. Maybe you have to convert one to a wide receiver, uh, but that was the problem with that. I think Justin Jefferson is a great player, don't get me wrong, uh, but the fit, if Thielen is a slot receiver, like I said, showed down more research, can't tell you for sure, but from what I know, he is. Uh, that was the only problem with that. So well, you can be, you can line up in the slot and still play like you're an outside receiver. Actually, that's what Stefan yeah. Diggs did with the Vikings. He would line up and then maybe cut to the outside, hit someone quickly, and make him look like an outside receiver. So I think that's definitely something Justin Jefferson could do as well. If that's how it ends up being. Watching Justin Jefferson for me, I saw more as a guy who who runs more crossing routes towards the middle. He can run those side routes. He can. Definitely go deep and catch some nice uh, deep balls, contested balls uh, as well. So it just depends on what the Vikings decide to do with it there. Uh, Ryan, any more picks that you'd like to talk about specifically? If not, then I think we could wrap this puppy up. Uh, Ryan, what do you uh, think? No, I think we, we hit on all the important ones, but there will definitely undoubtedly be some more surprises that we don't expect because it's the draft, I mean, every yeah, year. Exactly. Uh-huh. Um, not any specific pick uh, per se, but towards the end of the draft, I would watch out for a team drafting in the second round to try and trade back up into the first round and maybe take someone that they believe has fallen with all these wide receivers that are there and running backs maybe going late. Maybe a team's going to want to jump up into the first round, not take a chance. So I think that's something we could see later on on that Thursday night. And just a specific point out for that one, I think the 49ers are a team that could possibly trade out of their 31 position. Yeah. Uh, Because the thing with the 49ers is that they have the two first-round picks, but I'm pretty sure their next pick comes in the fifth round, so they might want to trade out of this pick in order to get a bit more capital for another earlier-round draft yeah, this in this draft because they don't want to wait till what is it, day three, I think? Because day, day two is two and three, right? Rounds two and three. Yeah, that, that'd be day three. Yeah. So it'd be day three. They have to wait to pick somebody else. I don't think they're going to want to wait another day. So unless someone that they really like is on the board, maybe they like Ross Blacklock a lot and fill in that tackle that I was talking about before. Uh, but if not, then I think that is a big possibility they trade that pick away. And now we are done. So Tyler, you could wrap this. I'm not going to say puppy up again, but I just did. So yeah, we'll it's just wrap too it late. Up. <laughs> All right, I'll do so. Uh, so thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, comment your opinions down below about other picks that you think are going to be very important in the draft. We'd love to know what you guys think. And with that, we will see you guys later. See ya. See ya.